How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd. Today I'm going to show you how to do the 2004 um, M2 problem for your free response, so the FRQ for your AP Physics 1 class, or if you're watching this. Okay, so first off, you have a solid disk of unknown mass and a known radius, and uses the pulley in a lab experiment, as shown above. So we have this pulley here. Um, the, the string's wrapped around a couple times, attached to this little small pulley, and it pulls it down a distance D. So A is calculate the linear acceleration of the falling block in the terms given. So question number one. Now we have D, um, and that's really all we have to do this. Um, we don't know mass, we have a radius. Um, we also know, let's see here, um, it's uh, velocity initial is zero. It's because it says it starts from rest. Um, and you're trying to find acceleration. So first part I would do is I would use some kinematics where the displacement of the object is equal to its velocity initial times time plus a t squared all over two. So in terms that they want us to use, so in these terms here, this is going to be d. My velocity initial is zero, so I'm going to cancel it out. a, and it even says, yep, in a time t to fall. So we have also time t. Um, t squared over 2, and let's just solve for a. So it'd be 2 times d divided by t squared is our acceleration. So I think that is an acceptable answer for part 1. Okay, let's look at b. So this would be a, forgive me. Now b is the time measured for the various heights d, and the data are recorded in the following table. So we have a data table of distance first time. What quantity should be graphed in order to best determine the acceleration of a block? Okay. Well, acceleration, the units are meters per second squared. So, as we know, slope is rise over run. So, we want our slope, again, very, very key word here is linear, or I should say a graphed. I guess they want a linear graph. So, that's going to be meters, and our run is going to be second squared. So in this case, meters is measured in distance, and time is measured in seconds. So that's t squared. So b would be if we graph, so remember our graph here, distance versus t squared, that slope um, would give us a unit of acceleration. Okay, so I believe this, oops, I would say d versus t squared, is an acceptable answer for part b. Okay, now let's look at or part B, or there was the uh, whatever here. Now, now they want us to plot, plot the quantities and use them to calculate the magnitude of the acceleration. So here we go. So here's this data table. So we need to make T squared over here. So I'm going to make 0.68 squared. That gives me 0 0.46. I'm going to do 1.02 squared, and I get, uh, oops. Yeah, 1.02, I'm going to square that, I get roughly 1, I'm going to do 1.19, square that, and I get 1.42 uh, approximately, and then I'm going to do 1.3, and I'm going to square that, and I get right at 1.9. So now, let's see here, we're going to do D versus T squared, so this is going to be a distance of, that's half a meter, half a meter increments, so that's 1 meter that's 1.5 meters, that's 2 meters. And over here, uh, our time data, we're going to go from roughly 0 to uh, zero to 2 seconds. So that's half a second, or second squared, I should say. Uh, that's 1 second, that's 1.5, and that's 2 seconds squared. So we're going to start off at 0 0.5, at 0 0.68, so we're right here. Oh, oops, excuse me. Was messed up. Sorry, 0.5 and 0.46. So we're somewhere right in here. Then we're going to go 1 to roughly 1. So 1 and 1. Then we're going to go 1 and a half over to 1.42. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So right there. And then we're going to do 2 to 1.9. So like right out here. And there is our nice linear graph that we have. Now, doing the slope formula, which is rise over run or y final minus y initial all over um, 
T final minus, oops, got time, X final initial in this case. So we have 1.9 minus, uh, this is what this, this data table is, minus 0 0.46 divided by uh, 1.9. Oops, oh, sorry, that's a run, forgive me. Would be 2 minus 0 0.5. So when you type that into your calculator, 46 divided by 1.5, you get approximately 1 meters per second squared. Okay? So not too bad, but that's not actually the actual magnitude. And how we can do that is if you look at part A, our acceleration is equal to 2 times d over t squared. So we see here, d over t squared is equal to 1 meters per second squared. So we have to multiply well, our slope by 2. So 2 times our slope. So it's going to be 2 times 1, which gives you 2 meters per second squared. Okay. Now C asks, calculate the rotational inertia of the pulley in terms of m, r, and a. Okay. So this one's a little bit complicated because we have our pulley here. We have a tension pulling down. There's also a tension pulling up here on this block. Uh, this block has a little m times gravity. Um, uh, I guess if you're being technical, there is a normal force of this pulley on that pivot. And there's a big M times gravity of that. They, those cancel out. Um, and this does have a radius R. So that would be our free body diagram for this problem here. Um, so let's solve for this. So they want us to solve for moment of inertia. Now we don't know, sorry, sorry we're looking for I. So we know we have a, a tension here, so this object is actually rotating. So that means there must be a torque. So we know tau is equal to I alpha. And we know the torque in this case, it's just torque is just force times radius. So what's causing this to rotate is this tension. So this tension here is causing this system to rotate. So tension times radius, because this is at a radius R, is equal to moment of inertia times alpha. Now alpha is just A over R. So you have linear acceleration over R. Um, so let's go ahead and solve for uh, moment of inertia. So we have T times R squared over A is equal to moment of inertia. Now, um, we now have to, we solve for it, but notice here that the problem states, they went in terms of M, R, and A. So we gotta have little m in here. So we gotta incorporate this. So what we gotta do is now we gotta take this block. So we know what tension is. Tension is negative and you have mass times gravity pulling down, little m equals little m times a. So solving for tension in this case, because tension is gonna be the same in both of those. So tension moves over here, you get m times g minus a. Okay, and we can now take this t, so we can now take our tension and plug it in right here with our moment of inertia that we found. So we have R squared times M times G minus A, okay, all over A. And this actually simplifies. That's going to be for a moment of inertia. An example of you like math, this is going to work out to be um, M R squared divided or sorry, multiplied by G over A minus 1. And the final problem states, uh, the value found to be with the numbers of given quantities uh, can be turned rotation inertia. The pulley is removed and supported. The rotational uh, moment of inertia is found to be greater. So what is causing this to be less? So that's pretty much what I was asking. So this is the final one. What's causing it to be less? That would have to be, for so example, it would have to be moving slower. So, for example, the problem did state that the pulley has this wire or string wrapped around it. 
And when you think about it, the strings wrapped around in kind of like a helix fashion, not to this extreme. But as this pulley pulls, um, this tension, or I would say the torque, would decrease as the pulley moves. Does that make sense? So you're pulling from here, then all of a sudden the tension's here, then here, and it gets smaller and smaller. So that torque would decrease as the mass falls. So it's not constant. Okay, a lot of kids, uh, a lot of kids would want to put friction here. A lot of kids would want to do friction here. Um, friction would not necessarily um, be 100% correct because friction would make the moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia too large. Okay, so we had a, kind of a minute difference here. So it'd be something like that. Or maybe uh, the string slipping would be a good one. As in the string wasn't necessarily 100% on there. So they're kind of looking for something like that. So I hope this video helped. If so, give me a thumbs up and a like. And please subscribe for more physics content. Thank you. Have a great day.